Two years into the restoration project, the team of experts face more challenges. How to restore 200-year-old silk embroideries, of which less than one third remains. And how to remount the previously restored murals onto their original walls and ceilings. In the spring of 2006, the restoration team begins its most challenging task to date. Of the original 260 pieces of double-sided embroidery and the scores of cushions made with fine cloud brocade and Sujo embroidery, less than one third have survived. Those that didn't survive need to be replaced. But, of course, there are no originals to base the replicas on. In restoration terms, the team are now treading untrodden ground. Yuan Hongxi has been in fabric conservation for more than 20 years. She is now in charge of restoring the textiles. You know, China has a long history of craftsmanship, but it wanted to work with the World Monuments Fund uh, because it wanted to really understand what the latest international standards and approaches were for conservation projects that were this complicated. Before starting work on the restoration, the embroiderers were invited to the palace to inspect the remaining original pieces personally. <laughs> Restoring a double-sided embroidery puts embroiderer Chen Yinghua under a lot of pressure. The Forbidden City archives and a handful of old photos are the only references available, and descriptions of the embroidery are limited. So the restoration team needs to find a group of embroiderers who are familiar with old embroidery techniques. In Nanjing, they find Zhang Kaichang, an expert in making cloud brick. We are a family, a family. Cloud brocade differs from other forms of embroidery. It forms a three-dimensional texture. This, plus its astonishing range of colors, lends the embroidery a feeling like clouds floating in the sky. Zhang and his staff were thrilled to be involved in the restoration. They have to be millimeter accurate. A mistake on just one thread can ruin the entire piece. Because cloud brocade is such a complex craft, each piece takes a long, long time to make. Chen Ran Shen can finish 8 to 10 centimeters a day, but this is far more than the best craftsman in days gone by. Back in the Forbidden City, restoration expert Yuan Hongxi is inspecting the samples of cloud brocade sent from Nanjing. By 2006, three of the four types of cloud brocade had been successfully replicated. However, the remaining golden velvet style is proving more difficult to reproduce. Relying on pictures.
pictures from an old reference book, Jiang Kai-cheng and his engineers begin a bold experiment. They intend to build a golden velvet loom entirely from scratch. The embroidered cushions for the throne are the next items on the restoration team's list, and this time the team's travels takes them south. It was here, in the city of Suzhou, that Emperor Qianlong ordered the finest skills for his palace. This is where the team will find its answers. Gu Wenxia's skill has attracted visits from many famous people over the years, including King Sihanouk from Cambodia and US President Jimmy Carter. The most treasured photo, however, is this one, a photo taken of her with Chairman Mao. The regional culture is woven into the embroidery they produce. The designs are taken from fishermen's tattoos. This is where the art of embroidery began to be passed down through the generations. Gu Wenxia is now passing on her skills to her son and daughter-in-law, who help out in the workshop. But it's crunch time. Are they going to be able to reproduce the same kind of embroidery used by Qianlong? They only have photos for reference, but even with these, it's hard to see the details very clearly. <laughs> Trying their best to recreate the original designs, Gu's son and daughter-in-law first draw the pattern on paper, then transfer it to silk. Finally, they begin to embroider. Only those with 10 or more years' experience are allowed to work on the project. Gu Wenxia chooses more than 30 skilled embroiderers to start work immediately. They must finish 23 pieces of fine silk embroidery within one year. These newly embroidered fabrics will be used for the cushions on the Emperor's throne inside the lodge. Yuan Hongxi's work hasn't finished yet. She still has to visit an embroidery workshop in Suzhou that specializes in double-sided embroidery. <laughs> Chenlinghua's research has allowed her to recover many of the techniques behind the Chenlong double-sided embroidery. As she passes her discoveries onto the team, the results begin to show. For the girls used to freestyle stitching, the project is a demanding test of their skills. All of their stitching must be perfectly neat and even. One small mistake, and they will have to start all over again. Chen Yinghua has successfully recreated a 260-year-old double-sided embroidery. The team then receives another piece of good news from the lodge itself. 
10 pieces of original double-sided embroidery have been discovered in the East Wing. They are in quite good condition. The China Silk Museum treats the antique silk to protect and strengthen it. It's now 2007 and the workshop in Nanjing is still looking for a way to produce golden velvet embroidery. Despite the difficulties, the team is optimistic they will find something in one of the many historical texts that they patiently search through. Dai Jian has spent two years designing a golden velvet loom. His creation is an extraordinary machine that can alter the density of the cloud brocade fabric by adjusting a series of weights. Dai's loom requires only a handful of people to operate it. It's the first step to replicating the fabled golden velvet embroidery. Woman the most difficult part of making golden velvet embroidery is creating the velvet effect. The horizontal threads have to be wrapped around vertical threads spaced three millimeters apart. This needs to be done with total accuracy to form the three-dimensional texture. This specially designed blade allows gorgeous patterns underneath the threads to be revealed. Shanzongo 所以这个试验呢，就是呃，经过两年呢，所以一次一次的呢，这个工艺呢，在往前呃，往前进展吧，呃，设计呢也跟着呢一块儿的有有所进展，所以我们对它的信心非常大。After over six hundred attempts, the Nanjing workshop finally produces a piece of golden velvet embroidery to rival that inside the Emperor's Lodge. 我们经过了多次试验，这个才逐步减低这些问题。现在呢，可以告诉大家一个好消息，终于把云锦、宋锦和呃金和呃张荣融合在一起，复制成了金彩。这是非常难的一个事情。Restoration of the embroidery is being completed one by one. Shao and her team are now working day and night to prepare their final shipment to Beijing. Meanwhile, a remarkable break.
breakthrough is made with the murals. After a year of testing, the team finally manages to successfully reproduce the Qing Imperial Mulberry backing paper. The murals are ready to be mounted again. TK returns to Beijing in 2008 when the restoration is nearly complete. The final hurdle is to get them safely back on the walls and ceilings of the lodge with pinpoint accuracy. The team has a test room specially prepared. The uh, purpose of the section that we've just been talking about can probably be better illustrated with this mock-up that was prepared by the Conservation Department. And uh, it was constructed in a, obviously, a reduced scale using um, very detailed scans of the painting sections after treatment. The remounting was the most difficult part of the painting conservation project. The uncertainties that existed were largely, can we take these huge sections and in particular get the first ones up so that the other ones will fall correctly. The team decide to arrange the murals on the ground in the correct order. The most important concern, accuracy. We had a lot of discussions about the actual choreography of getting the paintings onto the ceiling. The Chinese and American experts have quite different ideas on how the murals should be reattached. The Chinese experts suggested they should put them back in the same order they were removed. But TK thought the murals may have changed shape slightly as a result of the restoration. This could create a series of displacements during the reinstallation. After discussion, the team decide to experiment by starting from the middle panel and working out to the edges, comparing any disparities along the way. This approach requires a huge amount of patience. After several attempts, everyone agrees that starting from the center is the way forward. With the order of mounting settled, the restoration team are left with one last challenge. Inside their office, TK and his Chinese colleagues explore how they are going to mount the murals. Should they roll the murals back on or reattach them flat? Um, uh, but I think we also have to, to anticipate some possible problems. With all the preparations complete, the remounting can begin. So we decided to do it by rolling them up and unrolling them using guidelines that we had. There were 12 ceiling sections. First one was a little hairy. We have a certain window of opportunity where the adhesive is active to accept the mural and to have that bond form. For such a huge project, uh, there were no disasters. The mules with their trunk-loy scenery are returned to their original locations in perfect order. <laughs> After three years of hard work, this unique giant mural is back in its place. Its impact is as dazzling as it must have been 200 years ago. The painting imitates the scenery outside, transforming the hall into an indoor paradise. Peonies and cranes represent wealth and longevity. 
This crane is in the style of the Emperor's beloved Giuseppe Castiglione. In another room, team members are replacing the Qianlong embroidery. The craftsmen and women from southern China have proved themselves the equals of their 18th century predecessors. The new pieces of embroidery are extremely elegant. In the same room, there hangs the fabled golden velvet, its secrets unraveled after all this time. The level of detail in the work is astounding. Each element and every color used has a special meaning. Fabric's team leader, Yuan Hongxi, is thrilled by what she sees. is about to begin as yet another group of conservationists arrive at the Forbidden City. They're about to face the final challenge of restoration. retreat in the Forbidden City has fallen into disrepair, with many of the crafts used lost to history. How are these buildings to be restored? Where are the rare and precious materials needed now to be found? How many secrets remain hidden in Chen Lung's private residence?